Hello everybody, it's Major Dot or Shane here, and today we're going to be resuming our cheat engine tutorial. Now, today we're going to be looking at hidden variables such as booleans and the like. For this example, we will be using Bloom's Star Defense once again, and we have this little chest here. Now, it has a variable that I like to call has been claimed. And it represents whether the chest should be flipped back or not. And you'll see what I mean by, in, by that in a little while. Now, sadly, the game has started using a bit more of a time-based variable instead of a boolean for whether or not you can actually claim the chest. So you can no longer create an infinitely claimable chest like you used to be able to do. So go ahead and attach your uh, cheat engine to your game. that You have your boolean. And whenever you're working with a boolean, 0 is off and 1 is on. And booleans are usually stored in the value type of 4 bytes. So since the chest has not been opened yet, we can safely say that it is off. So you can go ahead and search that. Oops, my bad. Forgot to attach it to my game. You can say that it's safely off. And you can just hit next just a few times to filter out the results of it and you can click this and now it will be on. So let's go ahead and search for one now instead and you can see it filtered it down quite a bit. So once again you can just hit it a few times to get the results really down low and then you can change the date ahead by one day. This will reset the box and now it will be closed once again. So it's back to zero filter it down a few times, hope to get lucky with some big chunks like I just got. Oh, there we go. And then you're going to click it again. Now that it's opened, you change it back to a 1. And just repeat this process a few times until you get a small amount of variables. Some games might have more variables attached to that one object than you would think. So right now it's closed and we're down to 4. We're going to open it. These two right here are the real ones because these other ones are flickering between the, uh, 1, 0, and some nonsense number. So these two have something to do with it. Let's try this bottom one. There it is. You can see that there are two different models here. One is the actual chest itself. This top one does not do anything, so we can go ahead and delete that. But there are two models here. There's the chest itself and then there's the back panel. Now when it's zero, or whenever the chest has not been opened, such as, if we were to change the date ahead one more day, you can see that the back part is not right there. But if we change this over to one, you can see that the back part appears once again. So although this is useless in a hacking sense, it's useful for the learning on how booleans work kind of sense. So that's how you do something like booleans. All right, so for this next one, we are going to go ahead and take a look at our XP. Now, right now, let me just increase the size of this a bit. Right now, our XP is at 133. Now we don't know that, okay? Let's say we're playing a game where our XP is not shown but the amount of XP that we get for killing an enemy is, okay? So what we can do is we can go over here and we can say that we know nothing about the initial value. So we're just going to scan. And we picked up 77,000 different values. So we're going to place down this little monkey right here, give him some upgrades, and this red balloon equivalent shows how many red balloons are on the battlefield. Now we know that each red balloon is worth one experience, so this means 20 experience was gained this level. Or the monster gave us 20 XP. So we can say the value was increased by 20. There we go. Now here are all the values that had their value increased by 20 just a few seconds ago. Let's say that the value has not changed to just lower the results a little bit. We can go back into the game and start up the next wave. 
Now this time it's going to be 30, so we can say the value was increased by 30 this time around. There we go, now it's getting really low in the amount of results, that's really good. So if we keep on just constantly checking and making sure, this time it's another 30. Just wanted to make sure that the XP did not reset right there because that would have been quite a handful. We do increased by 30 again and now we are down to 56,000. We'll just keep on doing this until we find low enough value that we feel safe changing some of the values. So right now it's 60. Okay, we're down to 8,000. This one is 55. And you know, if you're sitting here and you know what it is like me, then we all know that this one's going to be our value. But just for the sake of showing you, this one's going to be 57. Okay. You can see a lot of values that are changing on their own, so we can just go ahead and change value. There we go. Now we're down to 600. This next one is going to be 85. And now that we're getting a whole bunch of things on our screen, we can go ahead and do unchanged value again, and we're down to 144. Now see, here's the tricky part, is there are a whole bunch of values up here that are all different. And we don't know which one's ours, and there's also around 100 other ones that we don't know what they are. So we're just going to keep on going until we can lower that result low enough for us to feel happy and satisfied with it. We can do increased value by, this time it was 92. Increased value by 90. Now we're down to 69 results, quite a low amount, and we can safely say that none of these are going to be our experience. So we can go ahead and remove these selected addresses. Or not. Okay, in this case, we'll just take all these addresses that might possibly be it. We'll take them down there and we'll just delete everything. Oops. We'll just clear everything up there. There we go. So we have all these different addresses down here, and we know that one of them is going to be our experience. So how do we test this? In some games, they do checks every single millisecond, and other times they do checks every single time that you do experience. So in this case, let's just increase our experience to around 1,000. We'll hit play. If nothing happens, we know that that's not our experience. So we'll wait until the round finishes and we'll do the next. Let's change our experience up to around 5,000. You can see that one did work and we got our ranks. So we know that, that one is our experience value. Thank you guys so much for watching. Hope you guys learned something new. Hope you guys enjoyed the episode. Can't wait to start the next one. In the next episode, we are going to be taking a look at variables that are located around the current variable's address. Now, in th things like RPGs, it's usually, if you search something attached to a monster, it's going to have the stats of the monster and stuff like that. If it's in a tower defense, it could include the tower type, the tower upgrades, and all that kind of stuff. So I'm really excited to bring this next tutorial, and I hope to see you guys next time.